Jen, and I work on the education team at the National Archives. Today, we're going to be opening one of our document boxes to reveal the document inside. Let's find the box I'm looking for on our repository shelves. As you can see, this box is marked with a code, PRO30-69. Every document in our collection has its own unique code, and with over 11 million boxes in our collection, these codes help us to keep track of our many documents. Codes are usually made up of letters and numbers, where letters stand for a set of words. As we're a government archive, these words often refer to the government department where a document was produced. For example, FO stands for Foreign Office. In this instance, our code is a little different. PRO stands for Public Record Office. The Public Record Office was first set up in 1838 in central London to keep the records of central government safe. Up until then, records had been kept in many different locations, sometimes in poor conditions. In 1977, the Public Record Office moved to Kew in southwest London, and the building is now known as the National Archives. Before we open our box, I'd like you to think about the key questions we should ask about a document we haven't seen before. We could begin by asking, what is it? So what type of document is it? I'm now going to give you 30 seconds to think of as many other questions as you can. Ready? Off you go. Okay, so let's see if we came up with similar questions. So first up, what's this document about? So what's its content? We could also ask a few more. When was it made? Who made it? Who was it for? And lastly, why was it made? We now have our questions. Keep these in mind as we open our document box. I'm going to give you just 15 seconds to take a first look at this document, and that's not very long, so don't worry about spotting everything. As this is just a first glance, I'd like you to focus on two questions. What can you see? Try to spot any words or details that stand out. I'd also like you to think about what type of document this is. Look at the layout to help you. I'm about to lift the lid on our document. Three, two, one, off you go. So what did you manage to spot? Well, firstly, I noticed this document was printed and it's in black and white. Some of the words in bold lettering really stood out for me. So firstly, special conference. A conference is a large meeting organized to discuss a particular issue. I also noticed the location, Sun Hall, Kensington, Liverpool. The Sun Hall was a venue in Kensington, an inner city area of Liverpool. This must have been where the meeting was held. And finally, towards the bottom of the document, I spotted the word resolutions in block capitals. What could this word mean? Have a think about this and we'll come back to it shortly. Did you have any ideas about what type of document this might be? From the layout and some of the details I noticed, I thought it might be some kind of leaflet or poster. Perhaps you had a different idea. It's now time for us to take a closer look. You'll have 45 seconds this time to study the document carefully and gather more information about its content. Why was this special conference held? 
I'd also like you to think about one of the key questions we came up with at the beginning. Who produced this document? The special conference met to discuss two issues, unemployment, but also the provision of meals for school children at the public expense. We'll be focusing on this issue. Think about how we might refer to this today. The document was produced by the Labour Representation Committee. This was a political group formed in 1900 to represent workers and working class interests. I also noticed that the names of two MPs, Keir Hardy and Arthur Henderson, appear on our document, and we're told that they led the conference in Liverpool. What might this tell us about the committee? Let's now return to the word resolutions we spotted earlier. Did you manage to work out what this meant? Resolutions are decisions taken at the end of a meeting, so this suggests that the document was actually produced after the conference as a kind of report to highlight these decisions. However, I couldn't see any details about the decisions which were taken on this page. Could there be more to this document? Well, I'm now going to show you an extract from another page of this document to consider what was decided at the conference. This time, you'll have a minute to read through it. What was the committee calling for and how did they intend to achieve this aim? How did you get on? Let's now look at this together. So the resolution states that the conference agreed that school meals should be introduced, funded by the public. Today, we call these free school meals. They intended to achieve this by asking Labour members to introduce a bill into Parliament. A bill was a way for an MP to raise an issue in Parliament, which would then be debated and voted on and could become law. From this, we can learn that the Labour Representation Committee had some MPs. However, it was determined to get more members elected to Parliament to represent the working classes. In 1906, 29 of its members were elected as MPs and the committee formally changed its name to the Labour Party. Keir Hardy and Arthur Henderson, who we came across earlier, would both go on to lead the Labour Party and Ramsay MacDonald, who is also named on our document as secretary of the committee, would become Labour's first prime minister in 1924. So we now know that the Labour Representation Committee was a political group, which would later become the Labour Party. But why were its MPs calling for meals to be provided for school children in 1906? And was this resolution successful? By 1900, there was growing anxiety about the health of people in Britain. 
and pressure on government to introduce welfare reforms to provide greater support for the poorest in society. Throughout the 19th century, governments had brought in a number of measures to improve public health and hygiene in response to outbreaks of disease such as cholera. Changes were also brought in to improve the lives of children. And by 1893, education became compulsory for children aged five to 13. However, studies soon found that many children were going to school underfed and struggled to benefit from education. One study suggested that up to 16% of school-aged children in London and 15% of children in Manchester were underfed. Educational campaigners like Margaret Macmillan carried out pioneering research into the health of children in Bradford and called for free school meals to be introduced. Macmillan joined the Labour Party and her findings influenced the party's ideas about how to improve the lives of children. Labour MPs also argued that help from charities would not be enough on its own to support children and that the government needed to step in. The Liberal Party won a landslide election victory in 1906 and despite not campaigning to introduce major social reform, the party brought in a number of measures as soon as it came into power to support the most vulnerable in society, including children, the unemployed and the elderly. The resolution we have looked at today is significant as it did lead to a bill being introduced to Parliament by William Tyson Wilson, a Labour MP in February 1906. The bill was supported by the Liberal government and became law in December that year. This new law was known as the Education Provision of Meals Act and allowed local authorities to provide free school meals funded by local taxes. By 1914, 14 million meals were served in schools, but not all local authorities chose to provide them. The issue of food poverty and the relationship between health and education remains just as important today. This has been clearly shown in the work of modern day campaigners like Marcus Rashford and Jack Monroe, who have called on the government to fund meals for children during school holidays throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. In this lesson, you'll explore the impact free school meals had in Bradford when they were first introduced there in 1907. Well done for looking so carefully at our document today, and I hope you enjoy the lesson.